very, a magical man. And as a director, he was a thousand people. Uh, I don't know if I invented that remark or somebody else did, but it, whoever did it, it's dead right. When I mean that, he was an audience of a thousand people. Meaning? Meaning that he sat there as an laughed, cried, did everything, encouragement, encouraging you to do your utmost to be as inventive as you knew, as you knew how, and to show you his appreciation. Uh, it, so you came on to work for him as if you were coming on to an audience of a thousand people. Um, he had that magic about him. It was very, very much a circus thing. I think Guthrie looked at the theater as not only as a religious platform, which he did because he was quite religious, but, uh, but as a circus too. And I always think that he is a, you know, he would take you by the hand as a youngster and, and show you what the circus was all about. And that's, that, that's him. He was a magic man. When he blocked a scene, would he what? grab you by the hand and walk you around the stage? Well, he, he didn't block, block scene scenes, except he, he didn't block scenes. He, he knew how, better than anyone, how to make huge mob scenes rush across the stage with thousands of standards and flags flying. He knew how to do that more, better than anyone. Um, he didn't actually block people. He sat back and watched you block yourself and be inventive. <laughs> I remember one rehearsal with Dougie Campbell as uh, Toby Belch, and um, I was Ague Cheek, and I can't remember. I think it was Bruno Gerussi was Feste in that little scene where they, the capering scene in the, in the middle of Twelfth Night, and we're all we had a good dinner and we were all quite high and we came to the the rehearsal and we started to invent things and and Tony started to laugh out front and we were getting outrageous and just silly <laughs> and, and he said Absol absolute ghastly taste but keep it all in <laughs> he was a tonic to work for and uh, he got me my l big laugh in as Egu Cheek, where I say, um, I was loved once, that wonderful line where Andrew sort of rather nostalgically remembers, I was loved once. And then he said, when you say that line, uh, when you say that line, disappear down the trap, fall down the trap, and don't come up again for at least a minute. God, what a wonderful, I was loved <coughs> once, zap, audience, f f falling on the floor, and then falling on the floor again when I didn't appear, and then when I did appear, falling on the floor again, you had three laughs. He knew how to do those things superbly. Oh. <laughs> I mean, he literally handed me my performance on a platter. <laughs> he was tall? Yes, he and Judy, his wife, I, we, we always called them like, the, the eagles have landed. Um, <laughs> they were six, I think he was six, six, um, very, very tall, and Judy was just as tall as he, and they both looked like sort of early Celts, or uh, what, um, what the Sitwells looked like a bit, uh, he looked like, uh, they both looked like Edith Sitwell, actually. Was he Irish or Anglo-Irish? Uh, he was Irish, uh, I think pretty totally. And you know, he was a cousin of Tyrone Power, which is strange now. Oh. Uh, um, strange, isn't it, that that sort of rather pretty movie star, the antithesis of everything that Guthrie stood for should be a, a connection. Tyrone uh, Power I knew, so, and one day he told me, you know, their cousins were. So they were both related to the, the great actor, uh, Tyrone Power, of the last century, uh, and also, I think James Tyrone, O'Neill's connection. I think there was some connection there too. Right. The Tyrone name had sort of swiveled its way through a lot of uh, connections.